I'd like to call the Township of North Huntington yeah. Board of Commissioners regular meeting for Wednesday, May 17th, 2023 at 7 p.m. Roll call, Manager Falk. Commissioner Stump. Here. Commissioner Atwood. Here. Commissioner Gray. Here. Commissioner Zoda. Here. Commissioner Wingren. Here. Commissioner Goss. Here. President Hagas. Here. Could everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for opening prayer by uh, Pastor Poole from Calvary Church? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you today for your presence. We thank you for the wisdom that you give to us. I pray tonight that each of us will think before we speak, that each of us will use the wisdom that you've given us to make the right decisions. We thank you, God, because you are with us. You are our constant companion, and we will praise you for all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If we could remain standing in a moment of silence for the passing of Officer Rocco, and please keep Officer Warman in our prayers. Thank you. Um, at this time, I just want to present a uh, AED to uh, Commander Bullock from the VFW. I'd also like to thank uh, State Center Rewards Office, Representative Tom Ward, and Representative Tom Ward. That's yours. <laughs> um, I always like to give thanks for whenever uh, I get, you know, when people take care of us down at the VFW especially. I'd um, like to let you know a little bit how the, this request actually was developed. Um, our post is actually reaching out to different organizations trying to help them out uh, for fundraising for uh, some community service and stuff. Uh, Pet Adoption League is one of them. Uh, they raise money for their thing. Um, the reach across America, obviously, and also we're actually starting to partner now with the West Warren County uh, Veteran Suicide Prevention Program. Uh, we're trying to get some uh, activities done at our facility for that kind of stuff there. And during one of our regular meetings, the one event actually had almost 400 people on our property. Uh, they had it outside. It was over the whole thing. And um, one of our veterans came up and said, hey, wait, you know, what would happen if somebody would have an emergency down here? We have nothing here for them. Um, of course, they'll rescue you at the top of the hill, but as we saw from the last football game, they come in really handy and, and save lives. I have to thank uh, Senator Ward, uh, 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 Representative DeVanzo, and obviously uh, Representative Dunbar, and also the Board of Commissioners for making this all happen. I really appreciate this. <laughs> I hate to say this, but I hope we never have to use this. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> If any residents would like to speak tonight, could you please sign the book at the podium? Thank you. The first resident is Brent. If you want to come up and uh, to the podium, state your name and address for the record. Yeah. My name is Brett Arnold. Uh, 73 Observatory Street Manor. So before the decision today, uh, it took a lot of considerations from you, all you commissioners, um, and we we kind of been at a standstill with an all or nothing approach. Uh, you know, it's industrial or it's residential, and I think that we have a plan that can benefit both parties, both the township and us as the landowners. Um, and I think we can accommodate everyone's needs and wants. We talked about possibly having the option to subdivide two small parcels, approximately five acres each, uh, side by side with frontage on Lega Road and rezoning just those two lots to R4. This would encompass our two build sites and our two perk sites. 
This is a viable option because it would leave the integrity of the industrial land intact over 80 plus acres for future development and tax revenue, as well as now producing instant tax revenue from the two new homes. This plan will no longer create the issue of spot zoning for Mr. Horseman's property. And best of all, unlike the overlay, we occur all the costs related to this rezoning and subdivision, not the taxpayers. So pending a subdivision approval, we would like to ask that you table this vote this evening to pursue a much simpler and a ta more tax generating uh, option of rezoning the two small parcels and leaving the bulk of the property uh, industrial. We hope this approach is something that you can support. Thank you. Thank you. Our next resident is Patrick. If you could come up and state your name and address for the record, please. Hi, <clears throat> excuse me, Dr. Patrick Marchand, uh, 12487 Longview Drive, North Huntington, PA. I just want to speak again uh, on the uh, behalf of the uh, uh, Smith Arnold property. Um, just some notes that I made. The uh, the property is uh, obviously industrial. Um, the uh, the comments have been made that uh, there's about 11 percent, I believe, industrial property left in the township. Um, you know, again, this property sat for over 50 years as industrial land. No one has uh, chose to build on it for some obvious reasons that I think we've we've talked about in some of the past meetings. Um, just allowing to build on this property is going to generate approximately $10,000 a year in tax revenue uh, between the district and the township. I'm thinking probably around $5,000 a house would be my best estimate. If we extrapolate that out over about a 20-year time period, you're looking at about $200,000 versus the about $1,100 a year that it generates currently. So we would look at a net gain to the township of about, township and the school district of about $180,000. Um, you know, some of the other issues, just should a company uh, uh, buy that and build on that property, and we can't say were that to ever happen, it, you know, certainly it could in the future, but we don't know when. Uh, certainly there would be a period of time that we would have to try to recoup the losses that we're going to see in tax revenue now. Um, and I'm assuming that, you know, to build on that property, there would be tax incentives that we would have to give a buyer worry to do some, I uh, uh, want to build some industrial, an industrial site there. Um, you know, and again, just the, uh, the amount of time that it would take to remediate the property uh, and the millions and millions of dollars that it would take to try to remediate that land. There's no water, there's no sewage. Uh, the, uh, I believe there's only two park sites on it. Neither one of them are uh, parked for industrial or just uh, residential. Uh, the water, I think, would be a, a tremendous issue in that uh, if there's an industrial property built there, uh, I'm sure there would be some type of fire suppression system that they would need for that. And again, I think that would be a, a roadblock for a potential uh, builder buyer. Um, the road itself, I think, would need to be remediated. It couldn't support heavy truck traffic on that property. Um, and then even the intersection at Route 30, I don't know if that's suitable for tractor trailers trying to turn into something like that. So just in closing, um, I'd ask you to, uh, you know, as our elected officials, uh, evaluate this in 2023 terms. Again, I don't know that we even know when that property was zoned as industrial. Uh, I think the best use of it now would be some type of a, you know, either what uh, Mr. Arnold suggested and some type of a rezoning for the frontage. Uh, that might leave some flexibility for both the homeowners and the township and that the industrial property in the back could still be used. Uh, at some point in the future if that would ever come to fruition, but uh, I, I would ask you to just consider that very carefully. And thank you. Right, thanks. Our next resident is Rick. If you could come up to the podium and state your name and address for the record, please. Rick Keenan, uh, 700 Leger Road. Back for the same thing. It's gotten worse. The junkyard that we have at the corner of Leger Road and 30, now it looks like Pitcairn Railroad Yards. They hauled a bunch of containers in there and are piling them up, tore the fences down. There's scrap vehicles in there, and by scrap, I mean no license plates. They're against state law. They must be in a garage or have a salvage license. He has none. 
There's an old Jeep parked down there now. There's all kind of tin sheds. They smashed them up. It makes Leonard's junkyard look like Fox Chapel out there where we are. And for some reason, your zoning people will do nothing but. There's so many. I have an old zoning book from the township, and you can go through it. I can pick violations like crazy, and I'm not an attorney, and I'm not on the zoning board. So it's starting to make me wonder what's going on. It's something stinks because there's nothing being done about it. And I don't think any one of you up there would want that running your property value down the way it's running mine down. I had a friend come up from Florida and look at, and he says, what in the hell is that down there? And there's not a one of you here that would want that on your street. And I want to know why there's nothing done about it. And it seems that somebody has golden status or something that they're, and it's Consider it gets worse all the time. He has a bunch of old junk uh, motor homes he brought in there. They've been in wrecks or half torn apart and everything else. Well, they're no longer motor homes. They're scrap. And he's working, taking parts off of one and another, and he doesn't have a seller's license. That's against the state law. But for some reason, our zoning people have nothing to say about it. And uh, all I say is I'd like to know why. And I, I'm going to talk to the chief over another issue. All right. Thank you. Our last resident, Dan, if you could come up to the podium and state your name and address for the record, please. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name is Daniel Burry. Uh, I live on 1681 Ipnar Road. And I just came up to... Uh, talk about the new development that's coming up. I'm, and I'm for it. I think uh, Mr. Pascarelli builds beautiful homes and he has a beautiful, he got a couple more homes out there that are gonna be built. And uh, we think it's a great improvement to the township. And the main thing I, I, I wanna highlight is that uh, Mr. Pascarelli and some of the zoning people have agreed maybe to extend that sewer line up to the church. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, we'd like to see that happen in the future being that it's about 40 years being that it's coming real close up to the road there. So like your consideration on that, if it comes before you in the near future. Thank you, folks. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Response assistance input. I believe the uh, first two residents spoke about the property rezone that we have on the agenda tonight. If the board's okay, we could address it at that time. All right, and then uh, Director Fonzie, maybe could you shed some light on uh, maybe Mr. Keenan's uh, concern about the property with some yeah. uh, junk or salvage on it? There are several violations on the property. Um, a letter was sent to the property owner. That's why the fence is coming down. There was an illegal fence that exceeded the height in that zoning district. So there's also other things that we were holding off of on that property. I can't really talk at a public meeting about that, but there's some legal issues put it that way um, so the property owner is starting to work on those but he is under violation and we will start fining if necessary thank you director Fonzie. any other commissioner input on that item all right and uh, the last item not to throw it back to you again director Fonzie, could you maybe shed some light on that as well yeah that that project was um, it's kind of been in flux for a few years and most recently Mr. Pascarelli went in front of the zoning hearing board to get a variance on the acreage shortage for a PRD. Uh, he was short of the minimum 30 acres. That variance was granted but there was some inconsistencies in his subdivision so he will resubmit an application for subdivision for his new PRD uh, which will have the single family attached home. So um, DJ Housley and I actually just met with Mr. Pascarelli's engineer last week. So they're working on the new drawings and I look for them to submit either, if not the end of next week, then for the next month. So it will be coming. So we can, we can look at the, the sewer line. I'm not exactly sure off the top of my head where that is and 
how far that would have to be extended, but that's something we can ask Mr. Pascarelli. All right. Thank you. Yeah, we can keep in contact with you and reach back out to you um, when that comes to the board. Any other further responses to this input tonight? All right. Approval meetings minutes for the special meeting 4-13-23. Motion to approve. Discussion. <clears throat> All in favor by state and I. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes seven to zero. For the regular meeting four nineteen twenty three. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Discussion. All those in favor by state and I. Aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Motion passes seven to zero. Payment of bills. Motion to approve voucher 21914 through voucher number 21985. Second. Discussion? All those in favor by stating aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 7 to 0. Staff reports, public work support, Director Albert. Anything to add to your report tonight, sir? I have nothing more to add. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. Any questions for public works tonight? Yeah, I would just like to thank uh, Mr. Albert for putting out a Watch Children sign on Frog Road. Appreciate it. The old one came up mysteriously missing. Huh. And uh, you guys so graciously uh, were asked to put one on there, and I appreciate the replacement. Thank That's you. not unusual for signs to come up missing. So. Is that right? <laughs> you know, we had the same incident down on McKee Road here with the crosswalk. Yeah. Sign that we put in the middle of the road. We lost two of them actually. So you gotta be kidding. Son of a gun. But anyhow, um, yeah. you know, every year at this time, I look at our workload and I think to myself, how the heck are we ever going to get all this work done? But uh, somehow or another, you know, our guys, um, mm -hmm. you know, they put, um, they go two, two feet forward, and uh, we plow through it, and and uh, we always manage to get close anyhow. So we have a lot of work ahead of us. Uh, for this summer's program and you know we'll continue to work diligently to try to complete everything that's necessary well thanks again for the sign sure appreciate it great work thank you <coughs> park and recreations report director miller anything to add to your report tonight sir just one quick thing for those of you that visit lions park uh, i'd like to at least make you aware that our pedestrian ramp is completed at Lions Park. That's a project we've been working on for some time now, and I uh, want to thank our labor staff and the assistance of uh, Rich Albert and some of the public works guys as well. But that pedestrian ramp is complete, uh, and it is open for business now down there. So thank you. Thank you. Any questions for Director Miller on park recreation? I do have one thing for Director Miller. Um, and it's not a question or anything. I just want to let you know that uh, our Cub Scout den did the uh, disc golf course at Ocalo Park last night, and they all had so much fun. It was incredible, and um, I'd like to encourage anybody else to go out and give it a try. Um, I thought it was going to be kind of, uh, okay, I'll do this, but I actually had a good time. So, Thank you. Thank you. Emergency manager report. Uh, any questions to get back to Coordinator <clears throat> Mahinsky? All right. Police report, Chief Rizzo. Nothing to add. Great. Any questions for the chief tonight? All right. Planning and zoning. Well, Oops, yeah. I do have one. Mm -hmm. um, we got some emails about the traffic signal at Robin Station and Route 30. Yes, sir. Um, I know Harry explained it pretty well, <clears throat> but that's been going on. And the problem is the arrow doesn't come on all the time to turn left from Route 30 West to Robin Station Road, right? I, I don't, I, we had pulled a bunch of incidents for complaints of citizens. That doesn't fall under our, our normal traffic <coughs> contracted person. That, that, was a, that was, I believe, if I'm gonna explain it correctly, um, Bodner Technologies is who was working on the timing issues so okay. um, that was something that <clears throat> Assistant Manager Turley, they were working on upgrades on timings and centers, lights and different things like that. So I know we worked on this uh, today, had dispatch pull this stuff. We're gonna follow <clears throat> up with uh, Bodner Technologies to find out what is going on with this. Is this a 
are they trying something and, and then coming back to see, you know, what it did or is it something that needs to be corrected? So we're going to follow up, try to get an answer right. as quickly as we can. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, I've gotten a number of complaints. In fact, I sat through it the one time and I was wondering if I was losing my mind, but I got other calls on, about it too. Um, the email I got today seemed to indicate that it was a driver, drivers not being used to the new system. And I don't know that that's accurate because I think we have a hazard problem there when the traffic backs up all the way down to Buttermilk Hollow Road. So. Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, I hope, agree hopefully we're, we're we don't have. Try want the residents her. to get used to that pattern. Yeah, I, 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 I mean, it took me a while to get used to the, the lag up there where the turn lane didn't go the same time as, right. as, as eastbound traffic went, too. So, um, like I told you, we pulled this today, and um, our traffic guy was working today, and we're going to get on Bodner as quick as we can, find out what's going on, and if it's something that they can make a timing adjustment um, as quickly as okay. we can. So, Thank yeah. you. No, no problem, Rich. Thank you, Chief. You're welcome. Anything else for uh, Chief Rizzo tonight? They have to wait for the state to come. All right. Any questions on the fire officials report? All right. Planning and zoning report, Director Fonzie, subdivision and land development. There are three items in front of you tonight. The first is subdivision S22 of 2022, the Lyons Thomas plan, uh, requesting board action to deny this subdivision based on the court order that was issued motion to approve second M motion to deny right deny. To deny. To right denial yeah. okay to the letter says denied. So, so we're clear <laughs> the actions to, that's a little, little confusing on the word so uh virginia made a motion for action to deny subdivision at the end of pam court and i believe there was a second i, I second by, uh, that, yeah. commissioner zona all those in favor of approving the denial? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes to approve to deny, seven to zero. Next item is subdivision five of 2023, the Tuscan Hills phase seven. One thing to mention that was different in your memo last week, the fee and lieu funds initially were allocated to Indian Lake Park uh, but I spoke with Director Miller, and he felt those funds would be uh, better used at Oak Hollow. So the resolution and motion tonight would include those fee and lieu funds going to Oak Hollow Park. So requesting board action to approve this subdivision with the conditions and that uh, allocation to Oak Hollow. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion. I, I have a question about the, the fee and lieu. Um, why, why is it going to either Oak Hall or Indian Lake? Why, why wouldn't it go to the closest park to Tuscan Hills? That's typically how those funds are allocated, but we have been focusing, and I shouldn't be speaking for you. It seems no. like, it seems like we're, we're concentrating on the more regional parks. So once one fund fills up, um, Dan, you could probably handle this better. Than sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, th thank you, Ryan. Um, we have got, we've steered away from the local neighborhood parks, the, the Country Hills, the Jacktown Acres, the Lincoln Acres. Those are small neighborhood parks that really do not receive nor um, really need a lot of funding. And we've steered our fee in lieu of several years ago to more regional parks uh, where we're making those improvements, master plan improvements and those sort of things. So uh, that's the reason for the change. Okay, but those parks are still going to get the attention and th that they need. Oh, absolutely. From a maintenance standpoint, they're there. We do a program every Monday called Small Parks Monday where those, those parks get attention. Okay. Uh, but as far as funding and master park plans and improvements, we're specifically dealing with more of the regional parks. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you for the clarification. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other board discussion? I just would like to make a comment <clears throat> about that. I still have a concern about... Uh, the distance with the gas well and capping, capping, proposal to cap the gas well without having any type of title search done by the applicant. So I, I would be opposed to this plan simply for that reason. All right. Any other discussion? I have a motion and second. All those in favor by saying aye. 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 
Opposed? No. Uh, roll call, Manager Falk. Commissioner Stump? No. Commissioner Atwood? Yes. Commissioner Gray? Yes. Commissioner Zona? Yes. Commissioner Wingren? Yes. President Hagas? Yes. Motion passes six to one. Uh, excuse me. Skip there. Oh, Commissioner Goss, I apologize. Eric's here. Uh, yes. <laughs> right. Excuse me. No, small, Motion I'm passes bad. six to one. Those roll calls always get me. <laughs> okay, and <clears throat> excuse me, the last item is Site Plan 3 of 2023, the Burger King restaurant. And another thing to mention that was also in the memo is this, would in, this approval would include a waiver from our stormwater management ordinance. It's section 307D, and it talks about infiltration for the stormwater, but since they're doing an underground system that's contained, there is no infiltration, so this is a waiver that's, uh, that they're asking for. Motion to approve. Go. Second. Motion to approve. Discussion? All in favor by state and aye. 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 Opposed? Motion approved seven to zero. That's everything. Thank you. Thank you, Director Fonzie. Solicitor's report, Solicitor Alexander. Thank you. There are two action items on the solicitor's report for this month. The first is action to adopt proposed ordinance number one of 2023 of the Township of North Huntington, Westmoreland County, amending ordinance number 765, the zoning ordinance to provide for a zoning change of property owned by Brett and Alyssa Arnold and Andrew and Jenna Smith. Said property being tax parcel number 54-03-00-0-15, wherein 95.54 acres currently zoned industrial I shall be rezoned R4. This, this item was laid on the table back in February, I believe, so wouldn't it be appropriate to first have a motion to remove it from the table? I wasn't here. Yeah, I believe last week that, I don't know if it was a formalized removing it as a table, but it was requested that it be put on the agenda for tonight. So if you want to make a motion but, to formally remove it to the table, we could do so. Um, is that in accordance with what the applicant was asking, or do we not? I believe the applicant last week was asking for us to make a decision on it uh, that we were ready to go and then we heard tonight I believe the applicant was uh, looking to possibly keep a table due to uh, further suggestions by the applicant tonight from what I heard. <coughs> Ellen, only one and of the applicants spoke tonight, not both of them, but I'm sure you're kind of speaking for both parties. And that's why I was raising the tabling issue. The motion to remove from the table would be in order. Yes. I'll make a motion to, to take it off the table. Second. All those in favor by state and I. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion to remove from being table and it passes seven to zero. So now a motion will be in order uh, on uh, action item number one to adopt proposed ordinance one of 2023. I'll make, make a motion we deny the rezoning. And I'll second that motion. Discussion? Yes. Is what the applicant requesting, is this a feasible request? To have the, have part of the, the <clears throat> lot zone residential with some frontage and the rest and keep industrial with frontage uh i mean it's, it's a similar it's situation similar it's just overlay. smaller lots um you'd if, still if i could oh. in, interject here um <clears throat> i think ryan raised the issue before about this piece that they're talking about now would be the fillet of property and why would you remove the fillet of property and to rezone it and, and leave all the, say, garbage property. So, oh, I mean, I, I don't know if that's feasible. <laughs> um, 
it certainly could be done, but I'm not sure that's the best use of the property. Yeah, I'm just asking for the feasibility of it, if that's something yeah. that's, that's available. Um, but I'm going to be honest, I, I went out to the property. Um, Mr. Smith's uh, brother or cousin, I believe, uh, showed me around a little bit. And basically what's left of that property is garbage. Um, you know, it was, I mean, it's roads that I wouldn't take your truck down. I've been um, down them, but you know, okay. <laughs> it's, you know, I mean, there's, there's just things that, that I, I don't think it's, it's set up to be without massive, some type of massive influx of money to make it usable. And I don't that, think any company's ever going to do that. Um, you know, I, I think that, that, um, the best way, I mean, I would let them just build their houses. Um, that's what I'm for. But, you know, I think that um, I, after looking at the land myself, I, I don't, can't really see too much of any industrial use on it. Hey Ryan, I have a question on that. What, what's the difference between what they're proposing now and an overlay district, which we talked about last week? It seems like it's the same thing to me. We're cutting out a portion of, of the property to rezone it. Yeah, and, and what I found in the research with the taxes is the, the land is taxed based on the use, not what the zoning is. So a house is always going to bring in less taxes than, say, an industrial facility. Um, the overlay, as proposed, was going to include property from Route 30 all the way up into the smaller Horseman property. So that would kind of expose all of those properties to potentially they could be residential one day. And then you've lost that tax base. Um, but with what Mr. Arnold is talking about tonight, they'd probably have to do a, a subdivision again. They'd have to do the subdivision first to kind of, I don't want to say undo the last one, but you can reconfigure with they created the 247 uh, acre lots. And then they'd have this, those lots created, and then they would come through again for another rezoning of the smaller property. I'd like to remind everybody, let's not forget about the Bozich property. Some of you are going to say, well, which one's that? About 10 years ago, Carpenter, or, uh, Colonial Manor, White Barn Theater, we all grew up at Manor East Swimming Pool, that was originally industrial. Now, 10 years ago, the Board of Commissioners decided to change that over to residential to allow Willow Heights to be built. So that property was more conducive to industrial, yet we turned it over to residential. Now we've got an industrial property that hasn't done anything in 250 years since the incorporation of this township 250 years, hasn't done anything but other than been a, uh, what is that, uh, mining, what do they call that? Strip, Strip mine. That road, Lager, is a car and a half. And when it got a car coming at you from the opposite direction, you either got to slow down or come to a complete stop. That road in many locations needs a guardrail. Anybody goes off that road, it will cost them their lives. And now you want to bring in heavy duty industrial equipment into that to hopefully build and mitigate land that's going to cost at least a base of $5 million for a company just to flatten out that land just to get started before they lay their first timber. I'm stating facts, no emotion. My point is this. We have an opportunity to increase our tax base by allowing them to have the property. We can start. Dr. Pat Marchant brought up good math, solid math, not fuzzy math. A home now, increased tax revenue versus the hope that an industry comes in there. I think it is absolutely simple to see the way that this needs to move in favor of the Arnolds and Smith for their home so they can get built. Anything else makes absolutely no sense at this time. And if Mr. Arnold wants to table this, for us to take a look at his proposal, I think we owe it to him to do that. Dr. Marchant brought some very, very strong information, as did Mr. Brett Arnold. 
and I'm reiterating, and also found other information that would only aid them in us making a wiser decision. Thank you. Any other further board discussion? Yeah, I would just, I would like to just to direct something to you, to the you two gentlemen. Um, I know you want us to table it now, but I read something in the paper maybe a month ago where you, you guys said you were frustrated at the lack of movement by this board and you were frustrated at the slow, the slow pace we were going at at this and that you wanted it to be approved. And, but now it seems like you're taking a step in the other direction. If you don't mind, could you come back up to the podium, sir? I'm sorry. Thank you. We're just trying to have a compromise that everyone can benefit from or, or the, it would be in the best interest at this point. That's all. And, and if it takes a little longer on the timeline, then I guess that's what it's going to have to be. Well, you're okay with that now because before you, it, when you came to the board, you said you were okay with a six-month delay, but then yep. a week later in a newspaper, you said you were frustrated by the lack well, of I, I'm, it's a frustrating situation, but, I mean, he took a bit of liberties with some of the things that he said on there, so. <clears throat> Just want to make sure we're all on the same page. I we mean, that's sir. a bit confusing when, when we hear one thing and then see something else. I understand. Thank you. Yes. Any other board discussion? I have a motion and a second to deny the zoning change. All those in favor of denial? State aye. 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 Opposed? No. No. Roll call, Manager Falk. Commissioner Stump? I abstain. Commissioner Atwood? No. Commissioner Gray? Yes. Commissioner Zona? Yes. Commissioner Wingren? No. Commissioner Goss? No. President Haggis? Yes. Motion does not pass. Motion the votes denies 3-3. Three, three. Yep. Motion fails. I Mr. Alexander, please. I'm sorry. No, Go ahead, Jason. I was going to move to place it back on the table until we can um, explore the the new It's proposal. denied. You can't. It's denied. It, it's it's just, already, I mean, it failed. Right. Yeah, the denial failed. Right. They... There is no There's, issue to place yeah. on the table. There's no it's motion. It's been adju adjudicated or decided, basically. There's no motion to table. But a motion to deny fails. The motion right. to deny, right. deny failed. So something would have, another motion mm -hmm. would have to be made. Right. And I motion to approve it. Second. Any board discussion on motion to approve the zoning change? Approving it. Now can I motion to table it so that we can discuss with them further their plan? I mean, I think we owe it to them to at least have a conversation with so them. So I would have that conversation now because there's no discussion following a motion to table? Okay. So before I make the motion to table. I mean, I, I, what, are you, we, what are you looking for? I, I want to be able to, to have staff meet with them and hear what they have to say and see if it's feasible, if it's something that, that the township can benefit from. I mean, I think, I mean, they came up with, I mean, they're trying to compromise. I mean, I don't what, think we, we have to be all hard-nosed about it. Benef what benefit would it be to the township to have the fillet cut out of the property? <clears throat> Name something. Taxation. You have two homes that you're going to get between four and five thousand dollars a year per home. That's eight to ten thousand dollars of taxation that will benefit this township for the next twenty years and more. Excuse me, Commissioner Goss. Those tax numbers, only about ten percent of that would come to the township. I will take your correction, but it's still additional income that will come to this township that we are, have yet to have come to this township. And in the hopes of one day having industrial move in, they offered us an olive branch, an opportunity to work with them to compromise. I can't believe it. I'm going to use the same words Jason said. Why do we have to be so hard-nosed about this? 
I don't it, understand this. It's a, These are the, my people in my ward. And I'm going to say, this is where I'm going to get a little upset. You can't upset. use your emotions, I'm, Eric. you got to go, I mean, you got to go by what, the, what our zoning is. And it's, if there were laws for every aspect of every, more, of every bit of mortal life, there would be no need for a single politician. There would be no need for anybody to argue anything because we would just go to a certain book and look at the law and buy the law. And we could save the people of America a ton of money by having no politicians. My point is, going back to what I said last week, everything has to be done by case by case. It is up to us, the, the elected officials of this community, to review everything with earnest and honest opinion and with integrity and with common sense. We're losing out on income. We're losing out on the ability to beautify some land. A land that's really, uh, if you guys haven't walked that property, you have not done your due diligence. You cannot make a decision in life without your due diligence. You're making a mistake. If I could <clears throat> comment, though I am abstaining in this matter. Um, Ryan, could you tell us um, how far off possibly doing some rezoning in the entire township will be uh, as far as you're talking about a timeline yeah timeline uh, I mean we're we're finishing up our long-range comp plan um, I mean assuming we get an application for subdivision I don't know that they'd be able to meet next week's deadline <coughs> um, so you're talking through July and then possibly get a rezoning application late <coughs> late summer August September no, I wasn't referring to that. I mean the comp plan in general. <clears throat> if there will be zoning changes throughout the entire township. The, oh, not with the comp plan. Well, aren't, wouldn't the comp plan generate some proposed changes to the zoning map? No. Yeah, so after, after the comp plan, our next step is to uh, look at our zoning ordinance and, and start to begin to revise that. and. Um, to complement the, the comprehensive plan, and that could take up to a year, year and a half to do. That, that's the, pretty much what I was asking. And from my knowledge, and I could be wrong about this, um, there is a proposal to do some Route 30 corridor improvements. And part of those proposed uh, improvements include a reconfiguration around Lego Road and where the sheets is in that area. So I'm just bringing that out there that there's a potential for that. Ryan's memo that he sent us May 15th, uh, was that Monday, says we are at least a year or two from updating our zoning ordinance and zoning map. And that may be the best time to discuss adding anything uh, changing overlay districts whatever uh, so we're looking at a, at least a year and a half director Fonzie I know um, it's really not too often we get a request for a zoning change from a commercial to a residential property correct correct I mean rezonings in of themselves are pretty rare and that's where I have an issue more than anything with this is, I think I said at last week's meeting, I think you kind of open up Pandora's box if uh, you can give approval, and I feel bad for this, these families that they bought this property and it's zoned commercial. But if we start changing for one property owner that's unhappy with their zoning of the property they purchased, I have a hard time telling the next group of residents, or maybe it's a business that buys residential that wants to turn it to commercial. How are we going to tell them no when we told these residents yes? I think uh, to Eric's suggestion that um, we have to hold true to our rules. That's why we're here, actually. The politi uh, political elected officers actually make the rules that we try to follow. So I, I generally think that we should try to follow our zoning ordinance. And if there is a time that we were to maybe take a look at it is when we do our actually zoning change or we look at our comprehensive plan and move towards the future. I think, like you said, Virginia, if we, there is some um, work in that corridor, 
who knows, there might be some development that actually wants to go off Lego Road if there's a Route 30 improvement where maybe larger trucks could get up into that property easier at that point in time. And in response to Commissioner Goss about why we have to be so hard-nosed, uh, I, I don't think that's the way to put it, but I think this property, although you may not consider it valuable right now, in the future when, you know, they're not making any more land. Um, so what we have is what we got. And if we give up uh, 95 acres of industrial, it's gone forever. So in today's world, maybe this property is not that valuable, but down the road, as property becomes more scarce, it will, in my opinion, most likely increase in value. I totally understand what you're saying. I mean, it's valid, but what you're doing is called hedging and dealing with something called futures. And now you're, 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 you're hoping, and that's what it is. It is, it's in the financial world, hedging and futures. You're, you're, bet, you're betting right now on the future. It is in the financial world. I prefer one in the hand is worth two in the bush. We have the opportunity to increase our tax base with these families right now. Brett came up here and told us, I'm willing to subdivide the 47. He's basically given, this op given us the opportunity to say, I still want to go ahead and build my house, but I still want to give the township their due diligence on industrial land. Now, you guys went and did it, and I called some old township commissioners. And I found out you guys did this 10 years ago. Willow Heights. It was zoned industrial. And you guys turned it back over to residential. Now, you did it then. Why don't you do it now? I might uh, say to that that we didn't do that back then. So, And I would, right I would even say to look into that because yeah. I grew up there. That was a farm in there. That wasn't right. industrial. That's agriculture. Right. That was a farm back in there when we grew up. There was do a we, farmhouse and a farm field. Right. Do we know that to be true? I believe right. there was a piece, it was owned by Savacor. There was a piece behind the, the existing factory that's, I think it's horizontal wireline services. 20. Oh. Mm -hmm. and, and that was part of the PRD that makes up Willow Estates. So it wasn't all of it. I believe it was a portion of that was industrial. I'm not sure the acreage. And I would just like to add, and I, and I know I talked about this a few a month or two ago, but again, we're here for the reason we're here. This could have been all avoided. We have emails going back a year when you guys were told or not you guys specifically. And that's why I told you a couple months ago. I think you were let down by a lot of people that helped you with this. The surveyor knew this was industrial and knew that that the house could not be built on there. He was told specifically that from this township. We have emails that say it. Yeah, and uh, yeah, there we have a whole thread of emails. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, and the realtor knew that too. I mean, I'm not. I'm not. That's not true. That's not what we were. Okay. Excuse me. Let me let me finish. We 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 do have emails to the surveyor saying that this isn't the proper way to do this. That you guys needed to come and look into it first. Okay. You you can disagree with me all you want. Excuse me. Excuse yeah. me. You guys done? Can I finish? Okay. Things should have been done way differently here. You don't go out and buy something and then come and basically, as I said a couple months ago, you basically are coming here demanding that we change our rules to fit what you have. And it is. Okay, whether you bought this property or not, it was industrial. If you weren't told it was industrial and that you can't build a house on an industrial property, I mean, that should have been researched first a little bit. Excuse me, ma'am. I'm done. They can talk. All right. 
I believe uh, we have a motion and a second to approve. Is there any other board discussion at this time? Excuse me, sir. All right. Roll call, Manager Falk. This is a motion to approve the zoning change. Commissioner Stump? I abstain. Commissioner Atwood? Yes. Commissioner Gray? No. Commissioner Zona? No. Commissioner Wingren? Yes. Commissioner Goss? Yes. President Haggis? No. Motion fails three to three. The second item on the solicitor's report is action to adopt proposed ordinance number two of 2023 of the Township of North Huntington, Westmoreland County, vacating ordinance number 2170 in its entirety and amending ordinance number 2022, the parks rules and regulations to permit domestic dogs in Indian Lake Park at all times. Motion, Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? All those in favor by saying an aye. Aye. Opposed? No. No. Roll call Manager Folk. Commissioner Stump? Yes. Commissioner Atwood? Yes. Commissioner Gray? No. Commissioner Zona? Yes. Commissioner Wingren? Yes. Commissioner Goss? Yes. President Haggis? No. Motion passes five to two. That concludes the solicitor's report for this month. Thank you. Thank you. Township manager's report. Manager Falk? Action to approve the April check register. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? All those in favor by state and aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes seven to zero. You have a copy of the budget report dated April 2023. Are there any questions? Okay. Moving on, action to award the police professional liability insurance, the Hudson Insurance Company, in the amount of $40,857. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? Harry, could you just let the public know what this 40857 is for exactly? Just briefly, please. Yes, this is for uh, the police liability insurance. It's, it's a separate policy than, than our regular insurance package. This includes um, in case of something bad happens, and it covers our uh, canine units as well. Is this for one year? What's the duration? For one year. One year. Thank you. Any other board discussion? All those in favor by staying an aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Motion approved 7 to 0. Action to award the guide rail maintenance contract to Allegheny Fence Construction in the amount of $66,040. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? All those in favor by stating an aye. 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 Opposed? Motion approved seven to zero. Action to approve the reduction of $351,707.40 from the original letter of credit, leaving a balance of $39,078.60 in the letter of credit for Legacy Place located at 8489 Country Club Drive. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? All those in favor by stating aye. 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 Opposed? Motion approved seven to zero. Action to approve the purchase of barriers from Start Safety Inc in the amount of $15,355 for emergency management. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion. And how many more. of those barriers will there be? Oh, sorry, Jason. No, go ahead. I take it right out of your mouth? No, go ahead. Okay. How many of those barriers will there be? Is there 36 that I see? 18 and 18? I'd have to look at the quote. I don't have it in front of me, but I So many orange, so many white? Yes. Yeah. That's what My question is, um, the old ones were, or ones that they had are being used by Public Works now? Yes, up on Frog Road. Um, I, I don't know how it hits the budget, um, but would that be a reimbursement to the emergency management from Public Works, or does it all fall under the same line item? It, it would be a different line item, so no, the Public Works or the emergency management would not be reimbursed for 
taking acquiring those from Public Works. Okay. I just want to know for how the budget worked. I want to make sure you know if we bought them for them once and they were used by another department. I, I don't yeah. know if it needs to be reflective in the budget that way. No. Okay. Any other board discussion? All those in favor by stating aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes seven to zero. Action to authorize the township manager to sign any and all documents for the Pliget procurement card program. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? I personally no. would be against that. <clears throat> I, I discussed it last week that, uh, yeah, I, I don't approve of this. I think it's one more step on the way to a digital currency, which gives the higher ups, meaning the feds, um, more control over how you spend your money. And it's not now, uh, it's, you're not talking about individuals, you're talking about a municipality. And I just think we should not encourage that. And, and the reason I'm against <clears throat> it is in order to get any kind of rewards from it, you have to spend a horrible amount of money. And our credit card that we have now should be giving us rewards on because you get 1% back if you have a Discover card. So we should should be able to have a, a regular or standard credit card that, that gives us something better than that would be my opposition to it. And just to reiterate what I said last week, too, this P-card system is used in every government. I guarantee you PennDOT has them. The state has them. We use them with the county. I mean, that's common government business. I mean, that's nothing new. That's been around for years and years. This isn't anything out of the ordinary. But, but we, My, we, don't, we already have something in place for it instead of Most government thing. agencies do. I'm sure county has regular credit cards, and they have a P-card system, too. Uh, it's common. Uh, the only thing I can say to that is maybe once they get the locals involved, the local, the lowest order of government, then they can start applying pressure because everybody has it. It's okay. I disagree. Just a point of clarification, Manager Falk, this would be replacing our current credit card that we would use. Correct. We would we would still keep our current credit card, which is through the bank. It, it's a debit card, um, but use it as credit, and there is a limit of, of ten thousand dollars that's set. Um, this would be for the, the the P card. You can actually change change the limit to, to whoever has it. Um, we can get additional cards uh, for travel. Uh, for example, if, if somebody goes um, to a conference, um, you know, instead of uh, uh, and it's it's just more I feel it's more controlled okay. we have more control over it any other board discussion I have a motion and a second all those in favor by stating aye aye, aye. opposed no. no roll call manager Falk Commissioner Stump no Commissioner Atwood yes Commissioner Gray no Commissioner Zona yes Commissioner Wingren? Yes. Commissioner Goss? I'm going to say no. President Haggis? Yes. Motion passes four to three. Action to approve resolution number 111 of 2023 <clears throat> to request grant funding from the Commonwealth Financing Authority in the amount of $110,500 and designating the township manager and president of the Board of Commissioners to execute all documents and agreements for the pickleball grant submission at Oak Hollow Park. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? Is there a match on that? There is a match. Our match would be 19,500. 19, okay. Any discussion? All those in favor by state and aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes seven to zero. Action to purchase a 2022 F-250 from TriStar Ford for the co-star's price of $45,573 to be paid out of the Capital Reserve Fund. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion. What will this truck be used for? This will be to replace a truck in the Parks Department. In the, oh, in the Parks Department. Yes. 
Thank you. Oh, what will happen to, happen to existing truck? The current vehicle that we have now has been put out for service. It's down at the public works garage. Um, we're looking to trade that if we can. If, we, if there's no value to it, then Rich may want to take it over at the public works garage. I can tell you it needs a new engine. So we're doing the research Boy. now to see if um, yeah. there's a replacement that we could get for it in the, the near future and the costs associated with that as well. Okay. And if you guys do, if you decide that it's not worth it, value, the value is just not there to do that, then this vehicle will be traded in or wholesale or retailed? Mm -hmm. yes. yes. Okay. It, it'll either be traded in or we'll sell it online through okay. Minissi bid. Okay, mm -hmm. very good, thank you. Appreciate it. Any other discussion? All those in favor by stating aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes seven to zero. Action to purchase two 2023 Ford Interceptor SUVs from Laurel Auto Group Incorporated for the co-stars price of $38,100 each be paid out of the capital reserve fund. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion. All those in favor by state and aye. 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 Opposed? Motion approved seven to zero. Action to purchase three 2023 Ford Interceptor SUVs from Laurel Auto Group Incorporated for the co-stars price of $37,910 each to be paid out of the uh, capital reserve fund. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? I'm asking for clarification. Line item 10 is two of those vehicles. Line item 11 is three of those vehicles. Do two go to what department and the three go to the another department? So in line item, or item 10, yeah. two of those are police vehicles that police. go to the police department. Okay. Uh, the reason why those are more because of, of the setup. Uh, the three are going to, two is going to planning and zoning and one is going to parks. And this is uh, paid for by grant funding. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Representative Dunbar. Thank, Thank you. you. Yep. All right. That's great. Thank you. That's all I have. Any other discussion? All those in favor, state an aye. 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 Opposed? Motion approved. Action to accept the proposal from KU Resources for the subservice subsurface investigation and geotechnical assessment of Kenda Dam in the amount not to exceed $15,310. Motion to approve. Second. Set. Discussion? All those in favor by state and aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes seven to zero. Action to enter into an agreement with LAM Enterprises for the 250th Summer <coughs> Celebration Amusement Attraction as the sole source vendor in the amount not to exceed $26,000. <coughs> Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? Did we uh, obtain competitive bids for this? Um, no, because they are the sole source vendor. Um, there, there's not very many, if any, people do this. There's just a, a, a <clears throat> small group throughout the, the country. Okay, so there was no other uh, companies to obtain a contract? No, Dan, Dan searched around, and, and this was pretty much the only one in the region. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor by state and aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes seven to zero. Action to approve the MMU between the AFSCME Local 221 and the Township. 211. Or two, 211. I Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? I just have a comment to make. I do support this, uh, the MMU. I just, I, I think I have an issue with the union not the union leadership not going to the rank and file members on this I, and to say that that is not usually done is not true i was a union president for 21 years of a 4000 union uh, of the state troopers i would have been 
crucified if I made a change to the, my member's contract without asking them. I've never seen it done. Um, I think this benefits all the members. However, I think this is a, a, a bad path to start going down to have, and I don't know how many people were notified in the union and how many weren't or if they voted on it. We voted on any change we made to our contract. When we had new people come in, they were handed a contract book and said, this is your Bible, keep it with you. That's what you live by is that contract. That's everything to you. And to come in and make changes to it without getting people's input on it is scare, a scary path to start going down, in my opinion, with my experience. But I think everything in this is, is good for the employees, but I, I still am a little bit uh, distressed at how this is being handled. That being said, I, I can support this, but I just we just have to watch in the future going forward. What does that stop? That, that, if that's the way that the business is run, what's to stop just the union leadership from making a deal that just benefits certain people and coming to us and working a deal out? And then we sit here as a board and vote yes on it. And I mean, we know how contentious votes get on contracts. Look what happened at the last contract, how contentious that was. And it passed, but it's contentious. And then we go make a change without asking input from people. I mean, it's kind of scary to me, but. What do you propose? Right. We should do. I don't. I mean, we can't force the union to go to go ask their members. I mean, I I, I think um, Commissioner Zelda asked for clarification from uh, the union representation as far as they're present to see if there was a formalized vote taking on the mm -hmm. change of uh, collective bargaining agreement. And I think from his response, it was basically he talked to the employees that were affected by this change of the contract, but not the overall party of the union membership. So I think that was maybe uh, Commissioner Zona's concern. And, and some of those yeah. sections, some of those sections in there that are removed, they have, they can affect any employee in this in the township, some of those. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know the main section is the dis part-time dispatchers, the ones above it that were being removed from the CBA, they can affect every position, every employee here. I think Commissioner Zona's uh, concerns merit concern. I think it's very well said. Is there any way that I can make a motion to table this until we get those clarifications for next month, then to decide? Or would you, Mr. Zona, do you want to move forward with this? Or well, bring I think, up good information? Yeah, up I mean, I think the clarification we got was there were several meetings held where these issues were discussed with the members is I think what the clarification we got. It was discussed with the members at meetings. It didn't say, it, and it says it's not, it's not usually taken back to the membership, these types of things. Again, I disagree with that. <clears throat> if I may add, if you decide to table this, um, we cannot advertise for the position of part-time telecommunications officers. Yeah. Uh, they're struggling as it is. Well, and then the two hires we have after that, will be reflected at that new rate if the MOU passes. Uh, their rate would, would and, be... And to clarify, I'm against tabling us. it. I said I'm prepared to vote on this and I'm okay. I think the sections that are being removed that I'm mm -hmm. referencing that can affect all employees, they're to benefit the employees. They're raising mm -hmm. the, the salary because we're taking out that little uh, that 80, 95, 90% thing. So mm -hmm. I'm just saying moving forward... Um, uh, my opinion uh, is my opinion on the issue is that uh, how the union works amongst themselves between its leadership and its its rank and file is is something that they need to work out mm -hmm. and, and uh, we really don't have a say on how they internally do their 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 bargaining you know, they, they've bargained it they've said they have and it's it's ripe to move forward no absolutely and I agree that's what I said we can't force them to do anything I just, I'm saying us as a board has to be cognizant of that moving forward Understood. Um, I would hate for a, a uh, change to come before us to benefit one or two people mm -hmm. and everyone not be aware of it. I think it's just a lack of communication on their end because if we come back in next meeting, maybe some of the membership's upset with this MMOU and then we, we're, back and ha we're sitting back yeah. at a table again discussing a different mm -hmm. issue. Exactly, yeah. All right, I believe we have a motion and a second. Is there any other discussion? So this is for dispatch. It's for the MMU. 
between the Ask Me Local 211. There, it's the agreement that right. we discussed. It's right. not just dispatch. Not There's just other dispatch. things in yes. there. Right, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. But if we don't approve this, this holds up. Correct. Just mm -hmm. making sure. And that dispatch, just for clarification with the word, we're looking at one or two. Depends on... It's going to depend on the candidates. Okay. Um, and the contract language allows us to hire part-time dispatch. It doesn't say the amount. Okay. That would be up to management's discretion. Thank you for the clarification. Appreciate it. I just want to say I'm going to have to um, concur with um, Mr. Alexander. I think he, he hit, it, hit it on the head. Um, as much as, as I see the concern, I mean, I was, I was in a union in college. I, I get it. Um, uh, I don't think it's up to us to make sure the union leadership has done their due diligence. I think that's up to the union to police themselves. And again, to clarify, I agree with that. And that's what I said. We can't, we can't do anything. I'm saying we should be cognizant of how you vote on something when it's for a small group of people. All right. I have a motion to second. All those in favor by stating aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 7 to 0. Action to advertise for the position of part-time telecommunications officer. Motion. Second. Discussion? All those in favor by stating aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 7 to 0. Action to hire David Dyson and Chris Brandhoover for the position of truck driver laborer in the Public Works Department at a rate of $24.96 per the collective bargaining agreement contingent upon successful pre-employment drug and alcohol testing. Motion to approve, please. Second. Discussion? Manager Falk, I just have a question on that. Is there, on these postings, is there any time specifications as far as, like, type of uh, uh, time of experience or time that somebody had a CDL or something like that? Yes, when uh, Rich, uh, Director Albert and I go through the applicants, we, we do look at that. Okay. And um, we didn't have any issues with the applicant or getting applicants. The issues was... Um, the applicants answering their phones for an interview and leaving a message and they wouldn't call back. So that dwindled our list down to even more. Okay. So. And these both just fit the times, everything that we need, all the um, criteria for the jobs? Correct. Okay. Any other further board discussion? All those in favor by staying in aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 7 to 0, and then I'd uh, like to welcome Mr. Dyson in the back and welcome on board. Action to hire Vincenzo Fioriola for the summer help with the Public Works Department at a rate of $15 per hour with no benefits. Motion, Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? All those in favor by state and I. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes 7 to 0. Action to hire Grant Williams for summer help with the Parks and Recreation Department at a rate of $15 per hour with no benefits. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? All those in favor by state and I. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion approved 7 to 0. Action to approve the request of the Penns Woods Civic Association for the 4th of July fireworks. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? All those in favor by stating aye. 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 Opposed? Motion approved 7 to 0. Action to reimburse Shelley Buchanan, tax collector, in the amount of $432 for a closed account for a parcel with the ID number 54-11-07-0-140. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? All those in favor by stating. I, 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 I'm sorry. Yep. I didn't get my mic on fast enough. Yeah. So, uh, what is this for? Mm. Um, without looking at the details in front of me, I believe that the, the, the account was closed. The, the, the bank sent in the money, and, and we have to refund Shelly because she already paid the general fund that amount of money so we're, we're reimbursing her fund does that make sense yes okay. I was I was There's just trying right to here. clarify on it on, on it that's all um, I, I wasn't sure if it was her personally her account her I mean I, I was just very confused. no the confused. tax collector has a, right a separate bank so account the, she so puts the all the deposits account 
Yes, and okay. then she deposit that server to our general fund. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? All those in favor by stating an aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes <clears throat> seven to zero. Action to reimburse transition health care in the amount of $1,131 for the year of repayment of business gross receipts. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion. All those in favor by stating an aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes seven to zero. Action to reimburse Joe Boccio <coughs> in the amount of $24 for the year of repayment of business gross receipts. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion? <coughs> All those in favor by stating an aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes seven to zero. Action to direct Planning Commission to develop an overlay district from Route 30 to the R4 district on Lager Road. Motion to deny. Or just let it die. Let it die, yeah. I make, uh, I think we should move on to the next item. I'd like to make a motion to approve. I think there's a motion to deny already on the table. No okay. So I'll second Rollins then. All right. Have a motion to deny with a second by Commissioner Gray. Any discussion? All those in favor for a motion to deny? Um, Aye. Under, uh, under discussion, um, if we read the memo again on May 15th from our planning director, um, he, I quote, I am concerned that the proposed overlay on Ligger Road does not come from a specific municipal need. Um, this serves us no purpose. So. I was the one that originally suggested that we look at this <clears throat> as a sort of a, an ability to do a win-win solution. But the more I think about this, to just do that one little section will cost the taxpayers a lot of money. Um, plus, Ryan makes a good argument that to rezone what I originally <coughs> proposed from Route 30 <coughs> to that other um, R4 zoned parcel that was going to be left hanging there as an island. Um, he makes a good argument for that. So I really rescind my opinion that we should look at, at an overlay and, and wait until maybe the entire zoning map is, is going to be redone. All right, any other discussion for motion to deny? All those in favor for denial, state aye. 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 Opposed? No. No. Roll call or vote, <coughs> Manager Falk. Commissioner Stump? Yes. Commissioner Atwood? No. Commissioner Gray? Yes. Commissioner Zona? Yes. Commissioner Wingren? Yes, for the overlay. Commissioner Goss? I'm confused now. Sorry. The motion's to approve denial. What, what's the count right on now? The, on the overlay. With the, the count. No. Vote your conscience. Vote what you want to vote. Yeah, don't worry I about the Yeah, I, I know, guys. I'm, I'm trying to, I appreciate you saying that. I'm trying right. to remember. Just to clarify, I'm voting to, uh, I'm voting yes to deny the overlay. Okay. okay correct. We're, we're done with the overlay. Okay. Yes. President Haggis. Yes. So the motion to deny passes six to one. Action for the township to initiate the comprehensive plans 45 day public review period prior to close of business on June 2nd, 2023 and to prepare an advertisement for a public hearing tentatively scheduled for July 19th, 2023. Motion to approve. Second. Discussion. All those in favor by stating aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Motion passes seven to zero. Thank you, Manager Falk. Any further board or comments? I have a comment. Our 
basically an invitation. In honor of Police Week, I would like to invite everybody. The public's invited. I'd like to invite my colleagues here on the board. Westmoreland County is having a law enforcement memorial service tomorrow at St. Clair Park in Greensburg. It is to honor the 27 law enforcement officers that have been killed in Westmoreland County. It goes back to 1903, I believe, is the first one. It is at St. Clair Park at noon tomorrow, so I would invite everybody to come out. It's going to be a beautiful day. Please come out and um, honor our fallen officers. Thanks. I have a uh, public comment that I would like to make. I keep getting um, complaints about speeding, and I would just like to, to say to the public, slow down, because it's just it's becoming one of those things that that's what I'm getting the most complaints about. I have one one thing. Um, I, based off of the township's 50th anniversary trivia that's been going on, um, I think we should uh, consider renaming Indian Lake Park. Um, and I'm going to butcher the pronunciation. I apologize, but a leg away, based off of the um, tribe that settled our land before um, before we were here. Um, I think it's a good way to honor them in, in not really uh, do much change into what we already have. If that's the pleasure of the board, I would like that we explore that. I have to admit, I really like that idea. I'm with Jason. I love that idea. Nice. We should look at naming rights. <laughs> yeah. But hey, that's for another discussion. <laughs> I mean, the board is comfortable. We could add that to a, our next work session topic for agenda item, maybe to talk about. And then I would like to just add: we would, uh, the board up here, uh, for what it's worth, uh, we all signed this card for uh, Sergeant Justin Wardman uh, in honor of Rocco's passing. He will be sadly missed. He was a great chief. He was a great. Officer Wunny. Yes, um, Sergeant Wardman had, had submitted a memo to me kind of expressing Rocco's life and what he meant to him. I'm not going to get into it because it was personal, but uh, you know, it was a tough loss for him. He, <clears throat> he took it hard. He, you know, he, it's a partner. You know, it's a pet, but it's a partner. Training with that dog on a weekly basis, living with that dog, patrolling with that dog, you know, they build bonds. So. Yeah, uh, it, he, he absolutely will be missed. But uh, I know Sergeant Ward has been wanting to uh, wanting to move on and to get back into the, into canine training, and we're we're working on on making that happen for him. Well, Sergeant Wardman, you know, we're sorry for what has happened and what you're going through, brother. But we got you this card, and we we hope it lifts your spirits. We all signed it up here, and uh, Godspeed to you. And I hope that God grants you peace and healing over Rocco's passing. And uh, may the good Lord bring you a new dog that you can have a, a new companion and friendship with. Man, God bless you. Thank you, Sergeant Wardman. And we'll get this card to you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Any other further board comments tonight? Motion to adjourn. Second. Discussion. All those in favor by state and I. Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes 7 to 0 at 822. Executive session to follow to talk about personnel matters.